Hey guys, I'm Triple Jazz. Today I'm going to show you my mostly mouse-free workflow for Clip Studio Paint. Let's jump right into it. One of the tougher things for me moving from Photoshop to Clip Studio Paint was just how the brushes worked. I love the brush engine and the feel of it, but I couldn't get over the way it was organized. So over the years, I've been using Clip Studio Paint for about six years at this point. I'm pretty familiar with the program. I do a lot of painting in it. I do all my illustration work in it and all my professional work in it. So it's, it's a powerful program. I can't speak highly enough of it, but I've had to make quite a few adjustments and I'm going to show you some things that you can do that might make you more comfortable if you're coming over from Photoshop or if you just feel like the UI is getting in your way. I moved all the tools and all the panels out of the way so I could just get to painting. All my brushes are down here in this panel. All of the brush settings are right here uh, on this side with these two panels, the brush size and tool property, which is different than most programs because most programs you have them, right? They're skinny, they're tall, and they're kind of crammed to the side like that. But I'll show you why I like working this way. I moved as much as I could to hotkeys because I like working with hotkeys because then I'm not clicking on things with either my tablet or my mouse. So when I press B, I get my brushes. And I spent a lot of time curating my brushes. I have a lot of brushes. I've bought a lot of brushes. I own a lot of brushes. There's a lot of brushes. So I wanna be able to quickly access these brushes whenever, wherever I need to. And in Photoshop, you can just right click or press the little button on your pen, press the little button, and the whole brush palette opens up. If that was the case, I wouldn't need to do any of this, but that's not the case. Clip Studio Paint doesn't have that function. So I can quickly sift through my brushes and, and I'm not using a mouse. I'm not clicking on anything. This is all just on the keyboard. And then I can sift through them one by one, right? And I can go back and forth on them. So let me show you how I set this up. So first of all, I switch between categories with shift one and two. So shift one, two, one, two, back and forth. One, two, one, two, one, two. And then I move between brushes with one and two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So using just a modifier key, I can get between different brush panels and their respective brushes. This is super, I'm telling you guys, this feels so good to use. I, I swear by it. Maybe you would find different keys more usable uh, depending on the size of your hand and what your keyboard's like, all that stuff. You can make it adjustable. But, but just thinking of swapping between things, just like our brush sizes, right? Brush size is, you know, open bracket, close bracket, open bracket, close bracket. We're gonna have to modify some, some keys real quick. We're gonna go to file, shortcut settings. Make sure you're in the options shortcut setting drop down menu thing okay click on options make sure you're in options it's options hit option sub tool palette this is what we want and you can see right here switch to previous sub tool one switch to next sub tool two previous sub tool group shift one switch to next sub tool group shift two and then i like to do switch between current and previous sub tool because i played a lot of video games for example in first person shooters q is to swap between your most recent weapon so you're kind of like swapping between the two so <laughs> i have q set as a hotkey to swap between my most recent weapon of choice so to speak if i need to go between a brush and the lasso tool i don't want to have to keep doing l and b i just hit q and it goes back and forth hey guys post recording sick jazz here the last thing i want to touch on is tying opacity and flow called brush density in clip studio paint to your keyboard shortcuts. Again, just trying to maximize staying out of menus and using our mouse slash tablet stylus for anything other than drawing. So under the options panel, tool property palette, ink opacity is where you're gonna find the ability to control and add hotkeys to your opacity. I just like to control either reducing or increasing opacity by 10% on control one and two. Under brush tip, it's reduce and increase brush density, which is effectively flow in Photoshop. And I have that on Alt 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 are kind of the base hotkeys I use to control all my brushes. So let me show you what this looks like in real time. So opacity just reduces the amount of flat color that comes out of your brush. So this is 40% opacity. And you can see it, it kind of creates like a glaze. But brush density is really important because it affects how texture is added. So if I reduce brush density, you're going to see now it's almost controlling the amount of paint that's coming out, not just the opaqueness. So this is reducing opacity. This is reducing density. You can see how they interact differently. Just another option to consider. Back to the video. Another thing that I like to do, I don't know if you guys have already done this, but I keep transparent and main and sub color separate. So X swaps my main and sub colors, and then C goes to my transparent. So that way, because I played a lot of PC games growing up, I like hotkeys that remind me of that. So X, 
goes between main and sub colors, and then C is for transparency exclusively. So the nice thing about this is you can swap between painting uh, transparently and then go back to the color you were using. Again, this applies to every panel. Th this is not just the brushes. This applies to every panel. Now, a lot of these tools, you know, already have their dedicated hotkeys. So for example, my selection tool, I can move between here, right? And get different selection tools if I need to by just pressing L. I think that's the default. I've moved the lasso fill in here, which by the way, should be default. But if it's not, I think it's under rulers or it's somewhere in here or balloon. It might be in balloon. It's somewhere weird, but you need the lasso fill. It's, it's a super powerful tool. If you haven't already checked out my video on it, I, I made a quick little sizzle video on it and, and you can see how powerful it is. I, I love working with this thing. It's, it's incredible for shape building, but I keep that next to my selection tools. And so if I actually need selection tools and not my lasso fill tool, well, one, 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 two, 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 two. Super easy. B is my brush, right? I press B and brushes come up. But when I press B again, I get something completely different, which is my smudge tool. This is where the magic really happens because I can quickly swap between, you know, sketching, smudging, and this allows me to put down and lay down value really quick and to just edge control very quickly. So depending on the project and what I'm working with, like I swap between the smudge and brush tool very often. So I keep them close together, but you'll also notice there's something else in my smudge panel, which is the liquify tool. Again, mouse free. I can go over to the liquify and quickly adjust drawings as needed. If my computer doesn't break first. Hey guys, post recording jazz here. I also want to mention one of my favorite things about this layout in particular is being able to drag and rearrange my brushes quickly. So that way I can swap between them on the fly in case there's certain brushes for certain projects that I just want to move quickly between. So I usually keep, brushes that I want to use regularly close to each other. Another thing I wanted to mention was if you wanted to have your liquify tool separately and somewhere else as I have it here, or even merge it with your smudge tool or any other brushes, you can just click and drag tools and move them. If you click and drag categories, it'll take the whole category. So I can move this to the eraser if I wanted to, but if I wanted to move the liquify by itself and you can click and drag back up, it'll become its own category. Just a quick note on how to rearrange your brush panel very quickly, get more organized, work more efficiently. All right, post recording jazz out. But this workflow is very powerful. I found this to be so powerful in fact that I don't wanna ever use another program. I, I love the way this feels. This feels so good to use. If there's a tool that you don't use that often, going down in the tool palette isn't gonna hurt you. But for me, I don't like being in the tool palette when I want to render, draw quickly, get ideas down. And to get into a flow state, you need to be very focused. And so messing around with menus and brushes and all that stuff, it's just a distraction. I don't wanna be worried about it. I don't wanna be thinking about it. So I'm not going to be thinking about it. That's gonna be it for me guys. Let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Are you gonna try it? It could be a game changer for you. It could be something where you're like, oh my gosh, this all just clicks. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. Again, freebies in the description for Gumroad. There's free brush packs so you can use my brushes and get started. Painting clips, you'll paint right away. They're totally free. Don't need commercial licensing. Don't need to attribute me. I don't care. Okay. Use them to your heart's content. I just want you to draw. So anyways, guys, have a good rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and uh, we're going to be tackling motivation. So I'll see you then.